Hey there, science fans. Ever stop to think about plastic cups? I mean, really think about them. They're absolutely everywhere, aren't they? At birthday parties, holding your lemonade, at big sports games filled with soda, even when you grab a quick drink from a water cooler. These simple items play a huge role in our daily lives, offering convenience and a way to enjoy beverages on the go without worrying about washing up afterwards. We use billions, yes, billions of them every single year around the world. But how does a humble plastic cup come into existence? It's a journey of science and engineering, and it's pretty cool. Let's investigate. So, what's the secret ingredient for these ubiquitous items? Well, it all starts with tiny plastic bits called pellets or resin. Think of them as super small building blocks, the fundamental starting point. The most common type of plastic used for these cups is called polypropylene. Scientists call it PP for short, which makes it much easier to say. You might also find cups made from polystyrene, which we call PS, or even PT, which stands for polyethylene terephthalate. That's a real mouthful, isn't it? These materials are all polymers. Polymers are like super long chains made of smaller repeating molecules, all linked up like beads on a string. This chain-like structure is what gives plastic its awesome properties, like being lightweight and easy to mold when heated. Now, where do these plastic pellets come from? They don't just magically grow on trees, unfortunately, though that would be something. They're actually made from fossil fuels. Things like petroleum, which is crude oil and natural gas. These resources are found deep underground, formed over millions of years. First, the crude oil is pumped up from the earth and taken to a massive facility called a refinery. There it's heated and separated into different components. Some of these components are then processed further through complex chemical reactions a big one being polymerization to create those plastic resins. So that disposable cup you're holding started its life as ancient decomposed organic matter. Wow, talk about a transformation from prehistoric goo to party cup. But wait, there's more to the recipe. The plastic pellets aren't always used completely alone in their pure form. To make the cups just right for their intended purpose, manufacturers often mix in special ingredients called additives. Want a bright red cup for your festive party? They add colorants, which are essentially like food coloring, but specifically designed for plastics, giving them vibrant hues. Some additives, called stabilizers, help make the plastic stronger or more resistant to degradation from sunlight or heat, so your cup doesn't get all floppy and weak if it sits in the sun too long. Other additives might make the plastic less brittle or improve its clarity. It's like baking a cake. You have your main ingredient flour, but you add sugar, eggs, and perhaps vanilla to get the perfect taste, texture, and appearance. Science. All right, science explorers. We've got our plastic pellets, maybe with some vibrant color already mixed in. What happens next on this manufacturing journey? They go on an exciting adventure into a giant, impressive machine called an extruder. This is where the crucial heating action begins, transforming solid pellets into something workable. The pellets are poured into a large container called a hopper, which sits at one end of the extruder. Inside the extruder is a long heated barrel, and within that barrel is a big rotating screw. Kind of like an Archimedes screw, but for plastic. As this screw turns, it meticulously pushes the plastic pellets forward through the heated chamber. The combination of intense heat from the barrel walls and the friction generated by the screw's constant movement causes the pellets to melt down into a thick, gooey, molten plastic. This molten plastic is incredibly hot and has the consistency of very thick honey or warm taffy. It's viscous and ready to be shaped. It's absolutely crucial that this molten plastic is at the perfect temperature, not too hot because it could degrade the plastic and not too cool because it wouldn't flow properly for the next step in the process. The extruder machine carefully controls these temperature conditions with remarkable precision. At the very end of the extruder, the molten plastic is squeezed out or extruded through a specially shaped opening called a die. For making cups, this die usually shapes the plastic into a continuous, wide, flat sheet. This sheet is still very warm and flexible, almost like a warm fruit roll-up, ready to be molded. Now for the really cool part where the flat plastic sheet magically becomes a cup. This amazing process is often called thermoforming. If we break that word down, thermo means heat and forming means shaping, so we're literally shaping with heat. The warm, pliable plastic sheet, still soft from the extrusion process, moves along a conveyor system. 
It then gets precisely positioned over a series of molds. Each mold has a cavity in the exact shape of the outside of a cup, like a negative image of the final product. Think of it like a very detailed and specialized muffin tin, but instead of baking delicious muffins, this factory is churning out thousands of plastic cups. The plastic sheet is draped carefully over these molds, perfectly poised for the magic of shaping to happen. To get the soft plastic sheet to perfectly conform to the intricate shape of the mold, manufacturers use a very clever trick involving air pressure differences. One common method is known as vacuum forming. In this fascinating process, tiny holes strategically placed in the mold are connected to a powerful vacuum system. When the plastic sheet is in place over the mold, the vacuum system is activated and sucks out all the air from the space between the sheet and the mold surface. This creates a pressure difference that pulls the plastic tightly and uniformly against all the contours of the mold. Another method uses compressed air to forcefully push the plastic sheet down into the mold cavity. Either way, pop! The flat sheet instantly takes on the three-dimensional shape of a cup. It's incredibly fast and efficient. Machines at work, molten plastic is molded into cup shapes. It cools and solidifies in molds. Cooling systems ensure even heat distribution. Proper cooling prevents deformation. Faster cooling increases production speed. Excess plastic is trimmed for a clean finish. Rolled rims add strength and comfort. Final touches include printing designs. Quality control ensures perfect cups. Ready for packaging and shipment. Plastic cups are incredibly useful, but their convenience comes with a significant environmental cost. Most a single use generating massive waste. They end up in landfills, taking hundreds of years to break down. Eventually they become microplastics, polluting our soil and water. This harms wildlife and enters our food chain. Recycling helps, but reducing use is best. Use reusable cups to protect our planet.